here we are. We're live. We're talking about exercise today. You know, we have an entire chapter on exercise in this book, and it's one of the four components of the Mastering Diabetes Method. So it's really important. We're going to talk all about it today. We're going to answer questions, and uh, it's going to be a fun time. So I know we're going to be live on Instagram, so I should go open up the Instagram app so I can see the questions that come in there. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to the Mastering Diabetes page and get this up. All right. Good to have you guys with us. So, um, the chat box can also be the, the brag box, right? Tell us what's, what wins do you, have you had this week? What are you doing? What movement have you done this week? We're talking about exercise today. And we're also, uh, you know, it's funny today's show. Somebody says, where do I purchase the book? You can purchase the book anywhere books are sold. Amazon's the easiest place to get it. Uh, Barnes and Noble's a great place to get it. Um, you know, Audible. We read Cyrus and I read the audiobook, which was super fun. We actually added some extra content in the audiobook that's not in uh, this book because uh, we did like you know we kind of want to just make it a little special. We added a little summary of what we were thinking about in the beginning of each chapter as we were writing it. Um, we added a little bit of extra science that had come out a little more recently prior to everything being printed. So the audiobook is, is pretty special, super fun. But uh, today's episode is about exercise, and uh, we just came out with a brand new podcast. So I'm actually curious, how many of you are, are listeners of our podcast? Just put yes or no in the chat box. Yes, you listen to the podcast. No, you don't. All right. So I'm actually going to uh, share my screen and go to... Um, Let's see here. Mastering Diabetes Podcast Apple. Okay. So here it is. And I will share my screen. You guys can see this. So we're going to present. Share screen. Share. Uh, this is it. This is our podcast. It's everywhere you listen to podcasts, right? It's on Spotify. It's on, I don't know. I think you can listen to podcasts on Audible these days. But uh, this is our new episode. Robbie's journey to three-time Ironman athlete. So in 2023, I completed three Ironmans. It was uh, a lot of fun. I uh, learned a lot along the way. And in this podcast, Cyrus and I talk in depth about my experience at the most recent Ironman race in Panama City, Florida. And uh, it's just some of the, the experience leading up to that race and, and uh, all that fun. So check us out wherever you listen to podcasts. Just type in Mastering Diabetes, it'll come up. The technical title of the show is called The Mastering Diabetes Audio Experience. Uh, believe this is episode 186, if I remember correctly. So a lot of fun stuff to listen to there. And I um, uh, hope you guys learn a lot there. So um, Nicole says she's uh, living with type 2 diabetes and she's from Arkansas. Okay, great. Glad to have you with us. Excellent. We have Ohio. Uh, possibly brittle diabetes. Well, we've helped a lot of people who came to us thinking that they, that they have brittle diabetes. Um, and everybody's different. Every situation is unique. But we have found that when you apply the principles, you get the results. So Jennifer, what does Jennifer say? Jennifer says, just got new blood work back. I'm still at 6.7, but change everything else down to 211. Okay, Jennifer, you know, we got to dig into the details. If you want to work with a coach, I would book a free discovery call. Uh, we have somebody on Instagram. I'm on chapter eight of the book, two weeks into the program. Uh, this is K Francisco, KD Francisco. KD Francisco, what experiences have you had so far? Let us know. I right, would love to hear. Okay. And um, we have somebody ask, can you clarify the carnivore diet? I've been following Master Beast for six weeks now. Okay, actually, let's do this. Watch this. Mastering diabetes, uh, carnivore diet. Uh, here we go. So we have a article on this topic. You can just always, it's very easy to find our content guys. You just Google, right? You just, just Google share screen, share. This is a great article, right? Carnivore diet for type one diabetes. What's the problem? And we dig into some details here. And so if you want to learn all about the details of what is a carnivore diet and why we don't recommend it, this article is specifically for type one, but um, a lot of the principles apply no matter what type of diabetes you're living with. So you just simply Google that 
carnivore diet for type 1 diabetes, right? So that's easy to find and uh, hopefully it helps you out. Lourdes is living with type 1 diabetes. Welcome. We have Tony from Idaho, 18 years. <clears throat> Not sure type uh, doctor change minds every year. Tony, I hope you seek out the best medical care. You can work with Love Life Telehealth. Love Life Telehealth would help you get, help you get a definitive answer through the proper testing. And also, if you're in our coaching program, we would help you test certain foods, certain ways of eating, and we can figure out what's going on. But a proper diagnosis is really important. Roddy says, when I lift weights or do intense cardio, our blood sugar gets raised drastically in the 300, 400. My physicians and I can only summarize it as the release of cortisol. And that raises my... So Rudy, Roddy, tell me, what type of diabetes are you living with? I'm very curious. What type of diabetes are you living with? Okay. And then let's, let's have a discussion from there. Okay. Uh, I got type 2 diabetes and I use injections to lower my blood sugar. So I wonder what type of injection you're using. Are you using insulin? Are you using something like uh, Trulicity? Something like that? Uh, let me know. KD Francisco says, the biggest difference I've noticed is waking up my sugar was at 250. Now I wake up at 130. That's big progress in two weeks. Big progress. Uh, Auckland, New Zealand, type 2. Tanya, great. Great to have you with us. Excellent. Uh, we have Roderick Smith, Houston, type 2, since January of 2023. It's time to take action. It's time to do something about that. Jennifer Marion, and yes, I follow everything that you guys have taught me. That's why my numbers are down totally to 6.7. I was the start of 7.9 back in December. That's big, it's a big change. You're winning, Jennifer. I like that. Let's keep the winning going. All right. Um, somebody in the comments on Instagram says, people, I'm a type one. Didn't listen to the guys. Ended up with quadruple bypass. Definitely going back to mastering diabetes. Jacqueline, I'm sorry to hear about a quadruple bypass. Um, but the fact that you're willing to share that and, and take accountability that you're going to go back is just a great wake-up call. Um, you're exactly right, guys. Uh, if you don't take action, um, you're setting yourself up for an increased risk of a lot of problems. And the number one complication, number one cause of death for people living with all forms of diabetes is heart disease. Okay? And so we just had a quadruple bypass here. Um, wishing you all the best. Glad, glad you're back on, on the program. All right. So uh, here in Uganda, do you eat cooked food? Because I usually see you in videos making recipes of raw fruits and vegetables. Okay. So let me show you something here. So let's share my, I'm going to go to masteringdiabetes.org slash recipe. Okay. Let me share my screen. So uh, at Mastering Diabetes, we teach you how to adopt a low-fat, plant-based, whole food diet. And these are the types of recipes that the vast majority, pretty much all of our clients enjoy. These types of recipes. In our book, I think there's over 30 recipes. I think maybe one or two of them it would be considered like a raw food recipe. So this is what we teach people how to do. This is what the science has shown works. So when I give my presentation on the history of, of reversing insulin resistance, there's not a single study that I cover that didn't include cooked food, didn't include things like, you know, basically cooked food, food that's like not raw, essentially. All right. There are some th things that like, you know, the study maybe didn't include grains or something. But the point is, that's what we teach here. Okay. Now, what do, what do I personally eat? Personally, I love to eat very simply, very simply. And I, I don't cook food. That's just, it's just my own choice. It's not a requirement of our method. Um, it's, some, it's a tool that some people can use to, to sometimes get some faster results. Sometimes um, we have this thing called the red light reset, sort of like resetting your body. We definitely, you we have this thing called ARAP, as raw as possible. And that's something our coaches use in the program when, when in a strategic situation. But it's not required. Um, and it's not like a tenet of the mastering diabetes method. It's absolutely not. Low-fat, plant-based, whole food nutrition. Enjoy as much raw food as you would like. But um, this, is, this is what the recipes look like, guys. 
It's as simple as that. Simple as that. Okay. All right. What other questions do we have today? We're talking about exercise. Roddy's living with type two. So Roddy, um, I really, really hope that you're taking action and like doing our method properly, like to a T. Um, and if you're not, I would, I would consider coaching, um, really because exercise should exercise. Yes. Can cause an elevation of your blood glucose. No question, but it shouldn't be going to 300 or 400. That's a sign that something is wrong. Something is off, right? We got to correct that Roddy and you can do it. So Kimbuck200, A1C of 5.6, but morning glucose is usually over 100. On a whole food plant-based diet, is this something to be concerned with? Um, if your A1C is 5.6, uh, I think the question would be, how are your other uh, health biomarkers? What is your blood pressure right now? How's your cholesterol? How's your body weight? So we have a thing called Pilaf. Let me, let me show you that. Pilaf, Mastering Diabetes. Okay. So it's an article about how to accurately assess your level of insulin resistance. And we created an acronym, okay? And you can download this free guide. But basically, for you to be able to say, hey, look, I'm insulin sensitive. I have reverse insulin resistance. Like, I got this under control. You need to address all of these. Your blood pressure needs to be in a healthy range without medication. You need to have reached your ideal body weight. Your lipids ideally would be in the healthy range without medication. Sometimes your doctor might have you on a small dose uh, for other reasons, but in general, your lipids got to be in range. You just can't, you just told me your A1C and you told me your fasting blood glucose. I don't know these other three parts, right? But um, I would definitely work on getting that fasting blood glucose lower, and I would I would you know wonder about your body weight and stuff like that. So. Hopefully that is helpful. That's how you assess your level of insulin resistance. Good afternoon, Robbie. Uh, you're from Socrates. Great. Uh, we have Zambia in the house. Uh, insulin. Mustafa is, Mustafa is using insulin. Well, um, I would get a C-peptide test and find out, can you get off insulin? Is that a reasonable goal? If not, then let's try and minimize what you're using to a healthy amount. All right. I'm watching from Germany, want to prevent type 2 diabetes. While well, you're in the right place, following the master of diabetes method and moving your body is key. So I do want to talk about exercise today. I uh, love answering the questions, but I do want to tell you, in the book, we've described our goal for what you should do, what you, would, you should achieve as a minimum for exercise. And what we want you to work towards is a minimum of six days a week where you are moving your body for a minimum of 30 minutes. Okay, six days a week, minimum 30 minutes. All right. And we want you to do this uh, consistently. And when you're moving your body, you should at least lose, you should lose your breath for a little bit of it. Lose your breath. Okay. That's we, 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 the cardiovascular system's got to get going. And that can happen while doing weight training. If you've ever done a CrossFit class, you'll be moving some heavy weights and you'll be losing your breath. Okay. It's a good situation. You want that. All right. Okay. So that's the goal. Now, wherever you're at, so is slow to moderate 34 minute walking each day enough? Okay, Addy, great question. It depends on where you're starting from. So if you were sitting on the couch and not doing that before, that's great. That's fantastic. If your doctor's giving you full clearance to do whatever type of fitness you want, then I would say it's time to increase your, what's going on. You're probably not going to lose your breath during that 30 minute walk. So some form of resistance training, some form of serious cardiovascular training um, would has is, is, is got to happen. It's got to happen. So I, would, I mean, you have to work towards it. You have to work towards it. That's the point. We should all either like, I think Tony Robbins has a famous quote. It's like, you're either growing or you're dying, right? You're not really like staying steady. So move, increase, like try and work towards increasing, 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 especially if you know, you're young. Um, but there's always ways to improve no matter what your age is, no matter where you're at, there's always, uh, ways to improve. So that's, what's got to happen with the movement. All right. Okay. Any other questions here? Um, any questions about blood glucose management? I've learned so much from private coaching started with three days a week, work up to five. Now it's six days a week. 
The best part is I'm 52 years old and started boxing up to five pounds and working my way up. Thank you for giving me. Hey, Lisa, congratulations. That's fantastic. And you're, you're making the, the very profound point, which I hope gets across to everybody. Start where you are and slowly work your way up. That's what Lisa's done. Started out with three days a week, worked up to five, and now she's at six. Slow, steady, consistent change. That's the name of the game. That's the name of the game. That's, that's how new habits and new ways of living become sustainable. Okay? All right. So uh, we're having a, a good time here. So when I eat a mango, uh, but if I eat the whole thing, I feel like I ate up a sugar and became sleepy and feel like I need to flush the water. Okay, Jennifer, uh, I don't know the details. Um, you know, there could be some fringe situation going on where for whatever reason, a mango is not good for you. I guess that's possible. But in the vast majority of cases for, you know, if we're talking about how this would apply to the general public, if somebody can't eat a mango without... Um, really becoming super tired or just things going south as far as how they feel, that's a sign that something's likely potentially off when it comes to insulin resistance or something is off when it comes to your microbiome. Or there could be um, some outlier here, like maybe you're allergic to mangoes. Some people are allergic to the skin of mangoes. So um, there's, there's things to look into. Okay. On Instagram. Hi, for an 81 year old patient, what do you recommend for exercise? Okay, so there's 81-year-olds that are out there running marathons. So what I recommend for an 81-year-old would be to progress from wherever they are. If the 81-year-old has been watching TV all day long and they're not even walking, let's start with walking. Again, as long as they have clearance from their doctor and everything is fine, that, hey, these are, these are safe activities, that, that you start where you are and you just move forward. Whether you're 81, whether you're 35, it doesn't matter. You, you just start moving forward. You do more than what you're doing now. And whatever you're doing, if you're doing something now, then you could increase the intensity. You could increase the duration, but you got to move forward. Okay. Donna says, what happens when your blood sugars drop drastically while exercising? Okay. So it depends on what type of medication. Donna, let me know what type of diabetes you're living with. If you're living with type one, this is the key. This is the game changer. A decision tree. Okay. Uh, it's in the book as well. Let's, let's pull that up. That is how you find out. So you, you're going to, you're going to learn through our method and through decision trees, you're going to learn the details of exactly. Yeah, here we go. Donna, you're in the right place. This book was written by two people living with type one diabetes. I'm one of them. Okay. You, this, we experience, we have helped so many people with type one diabetes, learn how to exercise and control their blood glucose. I mean, Cyrus and I are, are both avid athletes. Um, you can learn a little more about that by listening to our most recent podcast episode, where we both talk a little bit about our fitness in there. Um, but anyways, the point is what's happening is there's too much insulin on board. Uh, you're not like snacking properly beforehand. Your basal rate could be off. It depends on whether you're using a pump or not using a pump. Like, uh, are you using two different type, you know, what type of insulin are you using for long acting? Like we solved that problem, but, uh, you know, in short, you, you like, you have too much insulin on board and you're, and you're not snacking enough beforehand or your basil is too high. Those are like the summaries, but, uh, you got to dig into the details to solve the problem, which is, which is our passion here. All right. Do you suggest type two diabetics use it? Absolutely. 100%. It's in the book. So I just showed you the insulin dependent one. And this is the non-insulin dependent one. This is incredibly, incredibly powerful. This going through the process of filling out decision trees will change your life. And just so you know, we don't ask people to do something that we haven't done ourselves. I filled out 365 consecutive decision trees. I'm going to pull them up right now. Uh, 365 consecutive decision trees. Watch this. And all I'm telling you is if you did it for seven days in a row, your life will be different. Eating breakfast, exercise in the morning uh, after a meal. Yeah, Donna, there's a lot of ways to handle that. Um, it might be better to try exercising in the morning uh, before breakfast. That's possible, okay? But let me just show this just for funsies, right? This is I did many, many years ago. Many, many years ago. Diabetes. No, let's go to food consumption. 
let's go to it was 2010 to the beginning of 2011 all right so i started in november 2011 2010 and i believe i finished um in november of 2011 2010 anyways the point is i documented every single morsel of food that went in my mouth for 365 consecutive days i put a picture of it on the screen um, I showed the supplement I was taking, which was a B12 at the time. I said, how much did the food weigh? How many carbs were in the food? How many calories? At the very bottom, it's very hard to see, but at the very bottom left, it says percent of calories from leafy greens and percent of calories from culinary vegetable matter. Um, it has my calories for the day, my protein, my carbohydrate, my lipids, like, and the upper left, it has my weight in the upper right. I tested my my body temperature. In the middle, it says how much water I consumed. So I did that. Let's go back. And I also logged, um, let's see here, every single diabetes blood sugar reading. Oh, so it started in 2009 and finished in 2010. Okay. So there you go. December 2009 is when I first started doing this. But now look, I've done this for way more than just a year, but I'm telling you, I did 365 consecutive days with no break, right? That, that was the key here. I plotted every blood sugar reading, every insulin injection, put it on these two charts and put it in here. It was like a morning routine. I did it every single morning. Um, and I had all the pictures on my camera back in the day, like, you had to transfer cameras, transfer, transfer photos from your like digital camera, transfer it onto the computer, edit in Photoshop. Like this is a whole ordeal, right? And all I'm telling, all I'm saying you guys got to do to get your blood glucose under control is just put some stuff on a piece of paper and, and, and enter, enter it in the chronometer. Like your life will never be the same. Your life will never be the same living with any form of diabetes uh, if you do that work. All right, uh, we're going to wrap it up in a few minutes here. I've got type 2 insulin dependent and drop usage by 35% in about five months with using the decision tree. That's fantastic, Lisa. I love this. Love this, Lisa. Good for you. You're putting in the work and you're getting the reward. All right, so um, let's see. My area is very limited on fruit and vegetables. Produce section is like uh, five feet, meat section like 50 feet. Half of your cookable options are not available here. I have to drive 30 miles to get zucchini. Just basic options at stores near me. Okay, Tony, I really, I really, really believe that you can make it work no matter where you live, right? You're going to have to learn simple recipes. You're going to have to learn how to use spices. You're going to have to learn what can you order online, right? But it can be done. It can be done. Uh, no questions asked. If you want it, if you want it, if you want to play the card of like, oh, it's my environment is really challenging. You know, I don't live in a big city. I don't have a Whole Foods. If you play that, if you want to, you know, keep saying that in your head, you're probably going to keep getting the same results you have. If you want something different, you can choose like, you know what? I'm going to shift my mindset. I'm going to be grateful for what I have. I'm going to, and I'm going to use what I have. And then I'm going to use the benefits of living in 2024 where things can get mailed to me to add on to what I have and make it work. Like, it's a mindset shift. And those are the people that succeed in our coaching program. So we do free discovery calls. We do like the people get on the phone, they talk to enrollment specialists if they're ready for coaching. So if you feel like you're ready for coaching, you could just go ahead and uh, you could DM us and we'll help you. Actually, forget it. You know, if you're ready, just go here, go to masteringdiabetes.org. Like I'm just, I'm just, point, I'm just using Tony as an, as an example here. Okay. Uh, Tony, I, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're willing to share, but I'm just making a point, right? If you're ready, then you just simply go to our website. If you're like, you know what? I want to make that mental shift. I want something different in my life. You just go to the website, you click start here and you're going to book a call. You just book a call right here. You know, talk to an enrollment specialist. It's free. It's a free, but the point, the point I'm making is booking a call is easy. The point I'm making is that Book a call if you're in your mind saying, I'm ready, I'm going to change. I'm, I, I, like nothing changes if nothing changes. Right? If your mindset is, I'm ready to get different results than what I have right now, I'm ready to be coached, I'm, I'm ready to get supported, I'm ready to be a part of a community of people changing their life, 
that we are filtering for that on our calls. Hopefully you don't even book a call if you're not in that space, but we're filtering for that. And then we're putting you in the right group with the right person. Okay. With the right coach. Maybe you're living with insulin dependent diabetes. So you should be with an insulin dependent coach. You're definitely going to be put in an insulin dependent group. We never have people who are using fast acting insulin in the same group as people who are not using insulin. Those are, those are detailed conversations that don't benefit each other. People, some people do private coaching. Some people go into a weight loss only program. Some people don't even have diabetes and just go into the mastering weight loss program. So anyways, I just wanted to take, take the moment to explain to you why we do that. And I'm going to answer one question and we're going to call it a day. Okay. Um, this person says, I went to Dr. Friday. A1C is 11.5 and blood percent and uh, your blood sugar was 383. That's the Christopher Irvin. Uh, hey, Christopher, I hope you pick up a copy of our book. Do you own the Mastering Diabetes book? Get started there. But we're going to answer the question, uh, what is the best exercise for type 2? The best exercise is what you will do consistently. Okay? That's the answer. And then if you want the actual answer beyond that, the, the, the step further, is it's a combination of resistance and cardio. You're going to want both. Right? So something is better than nothing. If you're going to do ideal, resistance and cardio. CrossFit's actually like a great type of example. Uh, of, of a good combination, or you could do them separately, right? You could do running. That's your cardio. You could do weightlifting, just weightlifting. That's your weightlifting. Now you have a program that has both, but some form of resistance training is important. Okay. So there we have it guys. Um, and Lisa is going to end us with some positive news. Okay. Lisa says, I live in the middle of nowhere and have to drive about 25 minutes to get produce. I buy bulk, then make foods and freeze proportions that they use. Lisa, you're the star of the show today. Really appreciate you coming and sharing what you're doing. Keep going. This is just fantastic. I'm very happy for you. And um, this is what happens when, when, you, when you make it happen. So you're doing good work, Lisa. It's great to see you all. Have a great rest of your day. We are on here uh, on Wednesdays and Fridays, 1 p.m. Eastern.